everyone, and welcome to this video overview of our second module in our balanced assessment series, where we are focusing on understanding formative assessment. My name is Misty Higgins, and I'm joined today by Carrie McDaniel, and we are professional learning coordinators at the uh, in the Division of Program Standards at the Kentucky Department of Education. And this year we are focusing our work around addressing two essential questions. What resources are available to support Kentucky educators as they work to create and implement a comprehensive balanced system of assessment that is aligned to the Kentucky academic standards? And then also how can schools and district utilize the formative assessment process to help students meet the grade level expectations built within the CAS? We are in our second year of the three year implementation plan that is focused on balance assessment, really addressing that question of how do we know if they've learned? And as a part of our fall 2020 professional learning series, the very first module on comprehensive balance system of assessment was released last month and is available on KY standards. This particular module is going to take a closer look at formative assessment, really a deep dive from that broad picture we started with to that granular size at the classroom level. And so why? Why would we have this focus on formative assessment? Well, we know that from the research when formative assessment process is implemented in an intentional and purposeful way, it can greatly impact student achievement. And at the heart of formative assessment process, it is about noticing, recognizing, and responding to the evidence of student learning so that both the teachers and the students can help move toward whatever the established learning goals might be. We know that for our students, when formative assessment process is a part of our daily teaching and learning, it can help foster self-regulation and student ownership as they become more active participants in the learning process. And it also gives students the feedback that they need on what their possible next steps might be to help reach those intended learning outcomes. And for teachers, we know that the formative assessment process gives them the feedback they need to determine how effective their instruction was in helping students reach the learning goals. And also, it allows us to identify students that might be in need of additional instructional supports, as well as those that are ready for some enrichment. So that is the broad reasoning of why we really want to focus on formative assessment. So now let's take a closer look at this new module. So like Misty said, module two will now be available on KY standards and it is focusing on understanding formative assessment. So for module two, what we want participants to walk away with are an understanding of the key elements of the formative assessment process. So what are the elements of the formative, assess of formative assessment and how do we fit each fit into that comprehensive balanced system of assessment? We also want participants to understand the role of students in formative assessment. So how does formative assessment really help to draw feedback and eliciting of evidence to promote students owning and self-regulating their own learning? And then finally, we want them to understand the aspects of classroom culture and climate that can help support formative assessment. So what routines, structures, and supports are currently in place in classrooms, and how do they promote student independence in utilizing formative assessment to move their learning forward? The success criteria. So when you complete the module, we want you to be able to identify elements of the formative assessment process in a classroom setting and use those elements to help you identify those places where you could potentially improve upon your classroom culture and climate. So when you look at the module, it contains two different sessions. Session one is a professional learning, so that's where we're going to really build your background knowledge and give you that content understanding. And then session two is the teacher collaboration activity, so where you have the opportunity to opportunity to apply your learning from session one. We strongly recommend that as you're completing this, that you're doing it with a group, with other teachers and leader, leaders, whether that's in a PLC, in a grade level meeting, or with a faculty. But there are multiple opportunities built throughout both sessions of the modules for interaction, for collaboration, and for professional dialogue. So again, we strongly recommend that you work with other teachers in completing this module. Each session in the module is intended to take one hour, 
So all said, the modules would take two hours to complete both sessions. This is just a quick overview of session one. We provide you with an agenda. There are some recommended times of how long you might want to spend in each section. Notice here this is going to show you those main topics that we're going to cover in the professional learning session. So looking again at the cycle of formative assessment, the essential conditions that need to be present for a formative assessment, and what formative assessment really looks like when put into practice. In session two, that's the teacher collaboration activity, the chance to really apply your learning. So you will see there are really four main sections. The first section is really that refresher for you of how do making meaning, participating, and contributing, and managing learning fit into that cycle of formative assessment. So taking a closer look at the cycle of assessment within the specific context of formative assessment. In the independent reflection and self-assessment section, Participants will apply their learning about the necessary conditions for formative assessment, particularly student ownership and classroom culture, by reflecting on their own classrooms, using a tool to rate where they feel they are in regards to the fun fundamentals of learning. The share reflection and self-assessment section was designed to foster personal reflection and group discussion around student ownership and classroom culture by allowing teachers the opportunity to use the results from the reflection tool to really spark those reflective conversations with their colleagues. And finally, the planning for inquiry section is meant to serve as the first step in an inquiry process focusing on trying something new and learning about its impact in developing classroom culture that supports formative assessment in the fundamentals of learning. So in thinking about the resources you have available to you in this module, the first resource we've included is a facilitator's guide. And just to let you know, you do not need to be an expert on this content in order to these sessions. We have provided all of the materials, questions, and step-by-step -step instructions to help you in facilitating and leading participants through this module. Also included is your PowerPoint presentation, as well as links to additional resources and handouts. So included in those resources and handouts is a spirit versus letter article, to help build background on culture, a fundamentals of learning article, as well as the self-reflection tool to be used in the teacher collaboration activity. And finally, we've included a video from a Kentucky math teacher, which really highlights what formative assessment can look like in action. As always, if you have questions, feel free to reach out to either of us. Misty and I are happy to clarify or address any wonderings you may have along the way. And remember, you can access this module if you go to the professional learning modules icon on kystandards.org. Thank you for joining us today.